higher one, we will tell you about my invention. It all started with me watching a popular TV show on social issues. I have this old that day, both on people with disabilities. It featured a blind person. This guy was into computers. In fact, he was a software engineer, a technique. This fascinated me and had a deep impact on me. Think about people who are blind and how do they interact with technology. Consider a blind person who wants to know the time. What are all options that they have? A tactile watch or a talking watch could be any for you. But what about the task of navigating in a new city. Is the solution easy? In today's world, we use technology in everything we do. They send emails from a mobile phone, shop online using computers, sit in a corner and connect to the world. But do blind use technology as much as we do? Unfortunately, the answer is not that. Consider a regular mobile phone. Blind people use a regular mobile phone with the help of a text-to-speech software. For every selection or character entered, this software reads out the corresponding word or letter. The user listens to this voice through the phone speaker or through earphone. Now, it's not feasible to hear clearly each time through this phone speaker due to some external noise. Say the speaker uh, user is in uh, some crowded place, for example, a railway station or a shopping complex and it also attracts unwanted attention. A quick solution is to use earphones, but it is discomforting to wear earphones for a longer duration or to plug it in wherever you receive a new message. This feature of text-to-speech makes a simple task of dialing a number time-taking. <coughs> uh, apart from this, uh, the accent in the western screen readers is sometimes difficult to understand. With, for users with regional dialect. Sometimes you write Hindi or any other language using English. In this case, the software won't be able to do a correct voice synthesis. Some phones have voice control, but the output again depends on the accent of the user. For phones without a text-to-speech feature, the user has to memorize the navigation of the phone and all the buttons on it, which is slow and error prone. So, looking at this difficulty, we came up with an idea to design and build a phone for blind, which is completely brain reading. It was our last year at IIT Patna. Me and Vilip started working on the phone. We went to a school for blind in the city to understand how braille is read and written. We discussed with the blind teachers and students there about how they use the common mobile phones and the difficulties faced with it. They also suggested us some features which they would like in their phone. So what we thought of initially is we would make a braille panel with a lot of braille cells. And uh, so we tried making small braille cells out of electromagnet, shape memorialized, etc. But taste failed. I even used some strings of my beloved guitar, cut it into pieces, but guess what? It didn't work. While we were trying a lot of things, time flew by. And in the blink of eye, our semester got over. It was me every time who used to be dropped in the station in holidays. But this time, I dropped each guy, each single guy from the hostel and was left alone in the hostel working on the phone. After scrapping a couple of designs, we finally got a design which seemed feasible and we started working on it. After a lot of drilling, cutting, soldering and skipping of lens, we got our first prototype. Our phone is completely brain based. The user can enter data in the phone in braille and can also read all the text in the phone in braille as well. For entering data in the phone, the set buttons on the phone can be used, which are arranged in a 3 cross 2 matrix, as in a braille character. Well, we didn't intend to keep the buttons queue, but it's our first prototype, okay, right? The most important part of the phone, the most interesting, I think, is how the user reads the text from the phone. This phone has just one braille cell. This braille cell is com used in combination with the matrix of embossed dots on this touch screen. Each dot in this matrix can represent a number, a character, or a special character as determined by the software. When the user presses a dot on the screen, the corresponding symbol is represented by the braille cell. The user can perceive the braille cell 
using one hand and can move through these dots using the other hand. The advantage of keeping just one rail cell is that it helps in keeping the four dimensions small. And it also helps in making the phone users faster along with keeping the phone less in cost. All the functionalities in the phone are uh, given as apps. The phone has a dial app to make and receive calls. It also has a messenger app to exchange text messages. It has a phone book to store and retrieve contacts. Apart from these basic apps, we have some really advanced apps for the users to connect to the world using internet. We have an email client on the phone in which the user can send and receive emails. For socializing, we have a Twitter app. The favorite part of phone, my favorite part, is this reader app. The reader app allows the user to read any book by transferring the book in the phone's memory card and the phone will display it in braille script. This will be a great help in imparting education to children and others as not all books are available in braille. And these apps do not limit the functionality of the phone. More apps can be added to the phone as part of software. In fact, we are working on a framework where the blinds can themselves write apps for the phone and share it with others. For testing our phone, we consulted some uh, teachers who were blind themselves. Uh, initially, I taught them how to use the phone and uh, all of its functionalities. And in a couple of minutes, they started using the phone all by themselves and very efficiently. The best moment was when one of them used the phone and said, thank you for it. Thank you.